508. Um, God, I've been you know reading through your guys' mock papers. It looks beautiful. We, um, we're busy grading your discussions. Your level of interaction is uh, it's just amazing. It, it, it's exceeding my expectations, which is awesome. And uh, you guys are really, really smart, and um, it is coming through really clear uh, as we read through your um, completion of assignment, which is awesome. So, uh, so this is the, the second lecture for um, the, the week of July 1st. And um, so we're going to continue on with uh, building a house, so to speak, where we um, slowly began with understanding stress. And, and, you know, obviously Robert Sapolsky is, you know, the probably the world leader in all this. So it's great that he has provided all these useful materials. And I'm just here uh, to help you interpret and understand as non-biologists. And, and so don't forget that we understand you guys are not biologists, okay? So don't worry about it. Uh, do remember um, what I was talking about with Erica and, and how, uh, you know, an approach to um, uh, uh, doing the quizzes. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go into the next section. So we're going to do readings and quizzes. And then again, the, dis the discussion question is, is uh, drawn directly from what you're doing here in the readings and quizzes. Okay. So we go into the readings and quizzes. All right. And we scroll down to the um, to the second uh, component of this week's assignment, so we were uh, we were really hammering, hammering away at the point of how how uh, diabetes is directly linked to stress. So this this is this mind body connection, and I think a lot of you guys, I was reading through your discussions, and you you're um, surprised and also feeling very good about yourselves about becoming so informed about all the 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 hormones that are released into the body and how, how things like clinical depression do does have such a network interaction between your brain and a lot of the hormones that are being released out throughout your body. And I, I think that, that awareness is going to help you guys later on in life, not only with your own lives, but also in your uh, professional practices. Okay. And, uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to dive a little deeper into the what are called complications of diabetes. And, um, and diabetes, diabetes, because of what it does to um, the vascular system, and also because of what it does to your uh, immune system and, and inflammation, puts you at risk for all of these other disease conditions. So we're only going to go back in, we're going to go into this section right here. And um, we kind of go through um, here a little quick review of what's going on. It's, this is a really nice self-assessment quiz that you can take um, that is part of this instructional segment that's put out by um, University of California, San Francisco. This is an amazing resource right here. All right. So, again, you get access to it by just clicking on this, and then you click right here, and... Um, and then it gets, gets you into a, a, a little quiz that you get to take. Now, you can take this quiz. I'm going to get out of it right now, okay? Um, you just march along like so, okay? So diabetes mellitus is defined as too much sugar or glucose in your bloodstream, too much insulin or hormone in your bloodstream, weighing too much, okay? So we're just, I'm going to choose this one, okay? And it says show answer, okay? All right, so Ella, so it shows, it shows you that I got it right, okay? Then you go on to the next one, okay? Symptoms of diabetes, excess, excessive thirst. This is true because um, when you have a lot of sugar in your blood, um, it grabs hold of the water and it goes into your um, urinary system, into your bladder, and you pee out all your water. Yes. So then you have frequent urination. Yes. Fatigue, because... Even though you have a bunch of sugar, you can't put it into your muscle cells because your insulin receptors are not working. So, yes, blurred vision, this is a complication, okay, because of vascular compromise. Unexplained weight loss, okay. This can happen because, again, <clears throat> you're not putting in the glucose into your cells. So, and that's how we make things. That's how we build things. Nausea and vomit. I'm going with all of the above. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Can you believe that? I was right. Okay. So this is kind of what I want you to do. So I'm going to get out of here. Okay. And I'm going to go backwards in time. Okay. It's going to take me back to here. All right. Um, so this is the website. 
very nicely put together, all right? So I give you a few hints, okay, in terms of how to navigate this and how to have fun with it, okay? Um, you can go into it right here, okay? And it talks about the hormones that help you regulate your blood glucose, okay? Um, really well written, okay? So this is a, an exciting new hormone that has been tapped into um, in terms of um, the development of new strategies by pharmaceutical companies to control the diabetic condition. Okay? This one's still under research, and this one is actually uh, a, a drug that is now used to treat diabetics so that they're not so completely reliant on insulin. All right? These Both these hormones are actually released by your intestines and your stomach. Okay? And it happens when a, when a meal comes in, um, uh, it's a way of alerting your body, hey, this guy just had a meal, there's going to be a lot of glucose coming, let's get our, all of our ducks in a line, let's get everything set into motion. So the GLP, the way I remember this, is kind of like swallowing, gulp, okay, glucagon-like peptide 1, um, has lots of different effects. It does actually go to your pancreas, and it enhances the amount of insulin that is secreted when the blood glucose is elevated. Okay, this is what's called an incontinent effect. Okay, and you can look that up later on. But um, pharmaceutical companies research um, looked into this, and there's a new drug out there that is used uh, to lower the amount of of reliance on insulin. Okay, so you can take this pill, um, and um, uh, one of the drug names, uh, company is called Trulicity. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it really helps lower your, your blood glucose swell levels and, um, and the readout, like uh, hemoglobin A1C or, or uh, HbA1ac. Okay? All righty. Um, both this drug right here, okay, and this drug right here, sorry, um, Amblin, okay, so all these drugs right here, they have other effects besides insulin, okay? They actually will slow down the movement of your intestines, okay? Uh, to uh, basically improve glucose absorption in your gut, okay? Because you've you just had a meal, we want to get as much out of it as you can, okay? So, um, so that's all about fuel. And then I think importantly in terms of the mind-body connection and the body-to-mind connection, these guys, the GLP-1, the GIP, and the amylin, are hormones that can get released by your intestines and stomach. They get into your blood, and they actually travel up to your brain and say, that was a big meal. You know, maybe you'd better slow your roll, okay? Maybe with that big meal you just had, you've had enough, okay? So let's, let's decrease our appetite a little bit, okay? Go ahead and store it, and... Uh, and you'll be good until next time. So these are all, so, this, so in terms of diet pills, there's a lot of interest in developing um, uh, analogs that look a lot like these drugs, okay? All righty. So these are just figures to kind of illustrate, you know, what's going on, you know, and um, so again, do remember that um, uh, this amylin right here, okay? Um, it, uh, again, is released by your gastrointestinal system, okay? Um, it affects appetite. Uh, the beta cells, okay, interact with the gut. They're going to increase amylin secretion. So when you're releasing insulin, you're going to get more amylin. Um, the insulin itself sends a signal, okay, to the liver, okay? And it says um, what we want to do is we want to package um, as much as we can. Okay. All righty. So we're looking at a condition right here. It says, uh, fed state. All right. So this is where you're happy. Okay. You're really, really happy. Okay. Um, you don't need to be making a bunch of, uh, glucose because you got, you have a bunch of glucose in your blood. This is for when you're, when you're, um, this hormone is for when you're fasting. Okay. This, this hormone goes to the liver and says, I want more glucose. Okay. And that's how that goes, boom, boom, boom. But we're going the other way. All right, so just kind of looks through that figure right there, okay? All right, so we're looking again at the intestines, just like I was talking about. Food comes in, your intestinal peptides in increase, all right? So this is the GIP and GLP-1. They increase in the blood, they go down here, they interact 
with your pancreas and they say we don't need to be releasing glucose from the liver that's what this one does the glucagon with all the glucose coming in from this meal right here we're going to tell the beta cells to increase the amount of insulin so that way it gets packaged in the liver okay it's all about maintaining proper glucose in the bloodstream all right all righty we also have these drugs right here okay epinephrine and glucon glucagon they're released during conditions when you don't have enough glucose in your bloodstream okay so epinephrine is another word for adrenaline and we've heard that okay so during the flight or flight response we are going to increase blood glucose because that is our fuel to run away from the lion okay glucagon piggybacks on this and does the same thing so glucagon as you can see here is coming from the liver and it is released when you have low blood glucose, like when you're running, okay? Or when you're just really stressed out, okay? All righty. Um, and then lastly, right here, okay, this looks at what insulin does. So insulin, okay, we see over here, um, insulin right here gets released from your pancreas in response to an incoming meal, right? Its job is to package glucose into the liver, package glucose into muscle cells, okay? How does it do that, okay? Well, the insulin binds to its receptors right here, okay? And then those receptors will put this little vacuum cleaner, okay? This is the vacuum cleaner closed. This is it open right here. It's called a glucose transporter. It's going to transport the glucose into the cell, okay? All righty. And then you have that fuel for later on. Okay, it's all good. Now, we've heard a lot about stress, and we've heard about cortisol. Okay? And what cortisol does is it, it contributes to what's called an insulin receptor insensitivity. Okay? So even though you have high levels of blood glucose, okay, what happens is cortisol blocks the insertion of this vacuum cleaner and keeps it from working. So then blood glucose gets elevated, and that causes inflammation. It gets converted into fat in your tummy and all the problems that we've seen. All right? So that's the, the whole type 2 diabetes with insulin receptor insensitivity. You can see the link to chronic stress and cortisol. All right. All right. So that's the point of that. Again, this is a wonderful, wonderful website. Please go through and check it out. All righty. So then we ask you to come down here and start to consider the um, consequences, okay, of having diabetes, okay? So, um, so uh, diabetes is linked to a number of diabetic complications, and, they, and we go through them all right here. So if you go right in here, click to this website right here, um, National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive Kidney Diseases, um, the topic here is preventing diabetes problems. So each one of these is a diabetic complication. And I just want you to kick back, enjoy your 4th of July weekend, and just kind of go through here. And you can think about your friends that are diabetics. All of us know somebody that has diabetes because it is the biggest health problem in westernized societies like the United States. Okay? And they have complications where they have heart disease and stroke. So you can click on this right here, and you can do uh, a quick read about the link between diabetes heart disease and stroke, okay? And uh, sorry, we're having a little work done in our house right now, so um, I apologize for the background sound. And um, in, in the previous lecture, we looked at the link between diabetes and stress. So you can connect the dots right here. And I apologize for the sound in the background, but I'm not gonna do my lecture over again here. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here, okay? And we can look at kidney disease. Okay, um, and it's a big deal in diabetics, a big deal with people that have chronic stress, okay? So we can ask ourselves, how does diabetes cause kidney disease, okay? It causes damage to blood vessels in your kidneys, all right? And um, this is the whole concept of atherosclerosis. Um, high blood glucose, okay, causes hypertension. Um, we get injury to the blood vessels. Um, if you have this metabolic syndrome, you're much more likely to have massive amount of inflammation. And yes, vascular disease that causes kidney disease, heart disease, and stroke is an inflammatory disease. Okay? 
Yeah. Apologize for the background noise once again. Okay. So, this is the kind of thing I want you to do. I, I have a good friend who has to get blood vessels um, that are abnormal. She has to take injections into her eyes to stop the diabetes-related um, blindness because of the abnormal blood vessels that happens. Okay? All right. So, that's what that site's all about. I want you to investigate it. Okay? Um, lastly, short paper right here. Okay? Um... It's coming up, and we're going to let, let it load. There we go. And it talks about high stress, hostility, depression may up the stroke risk. Okay? So, again, it connects the dots of stress, cortisol, thank you, and diabetes. Okay? Um, and when you have the diabetic vascular complications, then you're going to be higher risk for stroke. And you can look at these statistics, and they're kind of mind-blowing, okay? Um, if we look at people on a psychological testing analysis, all right, so these are the scores they were taking. 86% were more likely to have a stroke if they had clinical depression, okay? 59% were more likely to have a stroke or TI if they had chronic stress, Okay? And they found that people with that had hostility that were, were twice as more likely to have a stroke, okay? So these are uh, uh, just a short read, but it's, again, something to think about. All right, so I'm going to get out of there. Okay, so then when you come over here, uh, what you can do is you can, you know, open the quiz, okay, just like I did right there. You can begin the quiz, okay? You can have this open from the very get-go, okay? You can... Um, look at this. Risk factors for heart disease include visceral fat, low, low triglycerides, okay, low cholesterol. Does that make sense? No, we know that. So the only thing that I see here that is correct is that. So I'm going to save that answer. But I'm going to make sure I am right about this. So I'm going to go back into the course a second time. See, I opened two tabs, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here. I'm going to find Gerontology 508, okay? I'm going to go right in here, okay? And I go into the readings and quizzes. Okay. All right. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to find the assignment that we were working on, okay, which was July 1. Okay. Um, I think the most relevant part that talked about these problems, like stroke and heart disease, okay, is right here. So I might go into here and see if I can't have the answers to what I saw here. Okay, so here's the here's the quiz, sorry, and I'm going to go back over here, and look, it talks right over here about cholesterol, blood pressure, so this is going to help me in terms of doing this, so you can just go back and forth, and like I told Erica, maybe read through your question set, all right, um, when you're done, just save your answers, but don't submit, do it, you know, when you are confident, okay, all right, so this goes over here. This goes back to maybe another website. So maybe you're going to have to go with this one um, to this website right here. So we see this question right here about the GLP-1 and GIP. If I remember correctly, that was in this website. So I would just click on this and I would find the answer to GIP and GLP in there. All right. So this is how you do it. Okay, guys. All right. So that is my, my suggestion there. All right. So then we're going to go over here to the discussion and participation. I, yes, I do want to leave this page because I didn't really do anything. All right. We're going to come down here, and we are at um, discussion number six. Okay. So here's those percentages we talked about in that short article. Okay. So you just go through here, you review it, and you post, and you interact with your friends, and you guys learn from each other. Okay. All right. Um, that is awesome, guys. Now, um, so this is a, a, a long weekend. I want you guys to be safe and sane, okay? Don't do anything crazy out there on 4th of July weekend. Um, what we have to remember is uh, I'm going down here at the very end. So there's a section on gratitude in our discussion, which means we also have a section on gratitude uh, when we look at um, our reading assignments, okay? And... We come down here, we see we have happiness and gratitude. The reason I bring that up is the 4th of July weekend is about a celebration where we all should feel very grateful for what we have, okay? And, um, and enjoy 
whatever it is you do, lower your stress, embrace longevity from the lower stress, and in you know just ex, you know express your gratitude for what for what we have you know in this country right now that we are all residing. Okay, guys. All right. So that's it for right now, and we will see you next week.